everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here today with a new dyeing experiment. I have dyed a lot of yarn using various sprinkles and candies, but I have never tried to use edible glitter. And honestly, this isn't something that I've ever played with anyway, yarn dyeing or not. So I thought it would be fun to try to take some of these pigmented colors and use it to dye some yarn. So it looks like we've got some cornstarch, some gum arabic, and then food coloring. I see red 3, red 40, uh, red 3, and blue number 1. Today we are going to attempt to dye 100 grams of Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and we just added probably close to 4 tablespoons of white vinegar. Um, this yarn has already been really saturated, so I'm just going to let it sit in the vinegar for a couple minutes, and then we'll start dyeing it. In attempting to open it, I have successfully gotten sparkle all over my hand. Um, oh, that's actually really, really pretty. It's very much like glitter, but uh, yeah, I'm going to go wash this off and maybe put on gloves. <laughs> I can now confirm a few things. One, my finger is definitely stained. Two, edible glitter does not taste like very much. Whoa! And it is very, very light. See how, like, it's just, oh, I should zoom out more. It just pours out really easily. Um, and each of these little flecks has a lot less weight to them than, say, sugar sprinkles. Um, I think that this is cool. I have no idea if they will dissolve, but, you know, we'll have to see. I've got the red now. They definitely sort of stick to everything. So I'm not sure if we'll see speckles, if we'll see some like pale blue and pinks around here or what. I'm just sort of going a bit all over. We'll move the yarn around and add some more. This is more sort of like a proof of concept because if you can use these to dye yarn, well then that's something really fun that you can do after having a birthday party or something. Um, just like a really fun way to play around with kids. Mommy, say that, that there is some, some melted through the other side. I'm now going to add some more to the other side, trying to get reasonable coverage. I My personal choice is to have sort of like a heavy hand with some of these things. I know some people prefer to have things more spread out, but I'm going heavy handed just to sort of, this way if we see like a very small effect, we, then we won't afterwards say, well, it's because I didn't add very much. Since we're adding a ton, if we see just hint pastels, then we know that this isn't something you necessarily want to try. But you can see that there is a lot of water in my skein, um, and that's because I wanted to sort of give this the best shot to dissolve as possible. But look at how that is sticking to the plastic wrap versus the yarn. I mean, this stuff, um, it goes pretty far, but it also just sort of isn't sticking around. I am seeing, I am seeing some color um, wash on the yarn already just from having moved it around and whatnot. So yeah, I would say I'm pretty optimistic. Oh yeah, there's definitely, these definitely are not as bright as the sugar sprinkles, but those tend to sort of dissolve quickly and sink into the yarn. So we will see what we get. I would say that I've probably used about half of each of these. And of course, it's not sticking a ton to the gloves, but when my barely damp finger went in, that's when I knew. I'm sort of flipping this again to see if I might want to add any more anywhere else, and I'm pretty happy with this. Um, maybe let's see if I can like pick some up with the end off the surface. Not so much, but doing that, I did get a nice little smear of color. But again, if you ever end up wishing that you had more color on a project, you can always, always, always over dye it. Now I'm just using this plastic wrap. Probably should have mentioned that I had plastic wrap on my work surface. And I'm wrapping this up so we can microwave it. Um, this will help keep the steam in 
and will be easy. <laughs> I'm now going to go microwave this on high in the microwave in two minute increments for a total of, hmm, normally I do four minutes, I might do six here. We'll see how hot it feels after four minutes. For this project, I did consider taking the yarn um, and not wrapping it up at all, just putting it in a silicone on a plate, covering it with a silicone microwave safe cover to avoid using plastic. However. I was concerned that these would stick everywhere, and since I wanted to protect my work surface with the plastic wrap, it then made sense for me to go and use that to microwave it. But especially if I'm doing an all over color, you definitely do not, like there's no reason why I had to carefully make sure things were separated in the jelly roll today. After four minutes in the microwave, you can see that the colors are starting to sink in, and we are very, very hot to touch. Dare I say, it looks like that they may have dissolved, which makes me really, really happy. Hopefully the washing of this won't be too, too bad, but I do want to leave this to cool completely because we want to give time for A, the food coloring to bind. Um, you know, there still could be some undissolved things in here that need to dissolve. And since it's going to take probably at least 20 or 30 minutes to cool down, that gives it sort of like a prolonged exposure to heat. Um, but once it's cool, then we'll go wash it. Our yarn has cooled off, so let's open this up so we can wash it. There's a tiny bit of color left on the plastic wrap, but it does look like we got a lot of awesome, awesome color in the yarn. It actually reads as very, very true from the edible glitter that we used in the first place. Woohoo! And add some clear dish soap. Um, I added a good palm full, but there is stuff in here that is not, uh, <laughs> not just food coloring and sugar. You know, there is starch in here, and you want to get as much of that out of the yarn as possible because you know what happens when you add starch with laundry, it gets stiff. And so if I put my hand in, there's some soap bubbles in the way now. Um, I do notice that the yarn, or the yarn, the water looks a tiny bit translucent. And that frequently happens when something is dissolving in there. Yeah, I think some of this cloudiness is because there's just other stuff in here that is a little beyond food coloring. I'm going to keep rinsing this. All the food coloring is in the yarn, and that's not bleeding, so that's awesome. But when I come back with the finished dry stain, I'll make sure to comment on any textual differences that I noticed on this really awesome yarn. Here is the finished yarn. We got amazing color penetration. These speckles are really, really sharp. But I think what surprises me the most is that there's not a lot of purple. In some of the areas where there's a ton of overlap, like right there, you can feel a hint of purple. But overall, this yarn feels extremely patriotic with red, white, and blue. And this would have been extremely fitting as a 4th of July episode. Texture-wise, this yarn is great. I'm not feeling any starchy residue or anything like that. The edible glitter is a little bit harder to work with than, say, sugar sprinkles. The flex, while they're a little bit bigger, they're really lightweight. They stick together a lot and they stick to everything else. I think it would be possible with some practice to spread them out a bit more, but since they aren't as condensed as the sugar sprinkles, um, it makes it a tiny bit more difficult to sort of get sort of a light speckling. That being said, these speckles are denser and have a little bit more color impact, probably because of the same reasons that make it a little lighter and airier, but the pieces themselves are bigger than the sugar sprinkles. Honestly, I think both edible glitter and sanding sugar are great 
for using for dyeing yarn. Sanding sugar is a little easier to find and can be a little bit cheaper. But with a good discount coupon, there's no harm in giving the other, giving this edible glitter a try. I picked the red and blue because they were the most pigmented of the colors available. And we know red strike fast, blue strikes slower. So it would be a pretty nice comparison to see, will we see red speckles and not blue or vice versa? But I'm really, really happy with how this came out. And I definitely would consider playing more of these in the future. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, smash that bell icon to turn on notifications, like the video, and leave a comment letting me know if you would try this yourself. Make sure that you check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store, where you can find hand-dyed yarn that has been featured in past and upcoming videos, and the Chemnitz Patreon, where you can get early access to one new dyeing video a month, uh, behind the scenes sneak peeks, and more. Thank you so much for watching.